I'm Dr. Bob Huter, Center Director of Moat Marine Laboratory, where we have the Center for Shark Research. Um, been studying sharks for more than 35 years. And we have this project now to look at the effects of the BP oil spill on sharks and other large fish in the northern Gulf of Mexico. And the funding for this project comes from a grant from BP to the Florida Institute of Oceanography of the University of South Florida. And then that money comes to Moat Marine Laboratory. We're also getting funding from the Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation and we're very appreciative for all those sources of funding for this very important and very expensive project. Even before the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, sharks in the Gulf of Mexico were in trouble. Their numbers have been severely depleted over the last few decades, primarily due to overfishing. Environmental effects really weren't a concern, or at least too high a concern, until this came along. And so now we have populations of animals that were already depleted by anywhere from 50 to 90 percent, depending upon the species. The Deepwater Horizon oil spill occurred in the lower DeSoto Canyon, a big deep area that's south of uh, Louisiana and Alabama and Mississippi and the Florida Panhandle. So it's an incredibly rich and diverse fishing ground. Some of it actually is habitat also for sea turtles, which is why a big portion of it is actually closed to fishing. But this is an area that, that um, has a tremendous number of these open ocean species. Our, our research cruises uh, this project to look at the effects of the spill on these large oceanic animals involves uh, at least five different institutions. So Moat Marine Laboratory is the lead, but we're also working with the University of North Florida, we're, lo we're working with Florida International University, uh, and several others who had representatives on our first cruise taking samples. So, this work is being done by many different labs around the state of Florida, and uh, that means that the, the results will be robust. For our project to study the effects of the oil spill on these open ocean animals, we're going to have a series of expeditions over two years. And we uh, just completed the first one that went out to the northeastern Gulf um, in the area southeast of, of the well and where the, the oil spill was, and sampled uh, with pelagic longline gear, a gear that's 12 miles long, comprising 200 hooks, is very effective in catching these open ocean species. to the boat and taking samples of their tissues and blood to look for uh, signs of oil spill contamination. Now those samples, uh, now that we've returned back to land, those samples now go out to five different laboratories where they're being analyzed for the presence of oil spill contaminants and breakdown products from oil, um, the dispersant that was, that was used on the spill, uh, genetic effects, any kind of genetic anomalies in these animals and also effects on their immune system. And what we're really looking for are the acute health effects of, of contamination by oil and then the long-term ecological effects of that contamination. And we did get a diversity, a great diversity of, of 13 different species in the, in the catch. But we'll see what the, what the lab analyses show in the coming months.